Hello, my name is Michael Barber, and I'm an Associate Professor of Instructional Design in the College of Education and Health Sciences at Toro University, California, in Vallejo, California, in the United States. In this video, we're going to look at some of the different types of screening and orientation supports and tools that online schools and programs currently use to ensure that K-12 students can be successful in their online learning opportunities. One of the common things you'll notice with these examples is a focus on the technology or how to use the tools needed to engage in the online learning. This will be followed by a look at the limited research that is available on K-12 student success in the online environment. There are a number of common screening or orientation tools that we see used by online schools. The first is the use of a readiness quiz or survey. This is an example of the type of quiz that you might see for an online school in the U.S. As you can see, it's entitled a two-minute quiz, is virtual school right for your student? And if you scroll down, what you'll see here are five questions asking specifically about your workspace at home, your individual schedule, the reason that you're looking for virtual schools, your specific learning style, as well as a question for the parent in terms of their ability to support the student. You'll see there's three responses for each, and the way this particular one is set up is that if you answer mostly A's, it says that you might be a good option for this kind of programming. If you answered mostly B's, it could be a good option, but maybe you want to do some more research on it. And if you answered mostly C's, then maybe this might not necessarily be the best option for you. Um, but they still recommend that you actually go and do some more research into the program and find out a little bit more about it. Similarly, here we are at another US-based online school, and you can see they have a student online readiness survey. And if we click on this survey, it takes us to a Google form, and you can see that they're asking you about your technology skills, they're asking you about your motivation, they're asking you about how you enjoy learning, whether some of the aspects of how you go about learning in terms of independently and how you uh, how efficient your studying is and whether or not you enjoy using new technology and you can type on a keypad and you're able to express yourself effectively in writing that you've got access to an internet and computer able to download software um, that you tend to be able to troubleshoot software a little bit that you have digital skills that you're familiar with these particular uh, programs as well as some of the functions in those programs and you can see here several questions about email as well as the ability to post to discussion forums, the ability to search on the internet, the ability to use real-time chat features, the ability to use and have access to a web browser. And you can see these 20 questions here. And if we were had gone through and clicked through these, we would have clicked on next and it would have told us whether or not they felt that we were a good candidate for this particular online program. The second common strategy that we see are the use of sample lessons or sample courses. In this example from a US-based online school, you can see they have sample lessons here from six different courses. And if we just take a look at the modules, you can see that each of the courses has multiple items within that particular sample lesson. So all of these here are from the physics and you can see all of these here are from the US history, all of these here are from the entrepreneurship and so on. And if we were to look at any of the content, one of the things you would find is text-based introduction to that lesson. Oftentimes you'll see things like objectives and notes, key terms that the student needs to learn, um, often there will be multimedia or text-based lessons that they have to go through in order to 
complete that particular lesson. In many cases, it can be interactive, as you can see here. But the idea behind these examples are they are designed to give the prospective student an understanding of what learning would be like in this particular online school. The third is through the use of guides or resources that are focused upon online learning. This is a guide that is provided by a Ministry of Education in Canada. As you can see, this particular one is targeted to students and their families. There's also one for school leaders and schools. If we scroll through and take a look at the table of contents, you can see that many of the items that they've listed are more technical in nature focusing upon the student's ability to understand the different terms that are associated with online learning, what it might look like, what it is or isn't, the types of things that they might need to be successful. So now we're starting to get into some of the soft skills, although you'll notice that there's not a lot of information about that particular thing. And interestingly, in terms of deciding whether or not you're ready for an online course, as you can see from here, they actually recommend that you search the internet to find a quiz that asks you these types of questions without recommending a specific one. The rest of it are some of the conversations to have about your work routine and style at home, as well as a fairly comprehensive checklist that's provided to the family so that they can ask questions of their online learning provider to determine whether or not the provider is appropriate for their particular child. In this example from a New Zealand based online program, you can see they have a bit of a text based description here. And then they have a series of videos that are designed to inform students as to what online learning would look like from the perspective of the program, as well as a teacher and a student perspective, and some advice in terms of how to build student relationships, what some of the benefits of learning online might be, as well as how to plan to be a better online learner. Finally, some online schools or programs have orientation courses that students would complete either in conjunction with their first course or prior to taking their first course. An example of an online orientation course is provided by this particular US-based online school. As you can see, the course is entitled Strategies for Online Success. And when we scroll down and look at the topics that are included in the three modules, you can see that while there are some soft skills that are included, in this particular orientation, especially when you look at module two. However, the vast majority of the items that you see listed here are still technology based skills that the student would be expected to have. To date, there has been very little research into K-12 student success in the online learning environment. In fact, one of the only empirical lines of inquiry has been the work of Margaret Robillier into the Educational Success Prediction Instrument. Originally proposed in 2003, it was a 70 item instrument that focused upon these nine areas that the team felt were required for K-12 students to succeed in an online environment. You'll notice that only one of those nine items are focused upon technology and that the other eight are focused upon soft learning skills. Over the years, Dr. Roblier and her team have continued to work on the instrument in an effort to decrease its size, but also continue to maintain its validity. At present, the instrument includes 25 questions around these four areas. While Jason Psycho has not been part of this team, this particular article is referenced because there is a copy of that 25 item instrument that you can use in the appendices. As well, the article also includes a detailed description of how to score the instrument. Obviously, one of the limitations of this instrument is that it is simply a prediction instrument. The next step in this line of inquiry, one that has yet to be taken by any researchers, is to design an orientation course around these four elements that K-12 students need to have success in the online environment. 
and then to validate whether that orientation is able to remediate any of these four areas that a student may be predicted to have a weakness in. No discussion around the supports required by K-12 students to have success in the online environment would be complete without a quick mention of the academic community's engagement framework. As has been described in another video, in order for K-12 students to have success, they need to have full engagement on the cognitive, affective, and behavioral planes. This engagement can come in the form of the student's own independent abilities, the support that is provided by the course community or things created by the online program, and the community support that the student has personal access to. As illustrated in this example, the type and amount of support that the student will have independently, as well as the type and amount of support that the student will have in their personal community, will vary from student to student and situation to situation. The only thing that an online school or program can control is the type and amount of support that's provided within the course community. This means that an online school or program needs to ensure that they have the ability to fully support K-12 student engagement on the cognitive, affective, and behavioral planes. Hopefully this video has provided you with an overview of some of the common screening and orientation supports and tools that K-12 online schools and programs often use. It should be noted that oftentimes these supports and tools are used to formally or informally screen whether K-12 students enroll in the online learning opportunity. It is only when a program uses some tool, such as the Educational Success Prediction Instrument, as the only methodologically reliable and valid instrument that has been designed to date, to determine whether a student will have success in their online environment and then provide some kind of orientation course to allow students to gain the knowledge, skills, and dispositions that would allow them to have success. All of these supports and tools regardless if they are provided prior to the student enrolling, before they take their first course, or throughout the online learning experience, need to be considered within the academic communities of framework in order to ensure that K-12 students will have success in their online environment.